Hello and welcome to this video on solving equations by completing the square. Now let's suppose we have this quadratic equation here. Well we know how to solve it by factorization and if you don't know how to do that then I recommend you watch that video first before you go on to this. So what we do if we were solving by factorization we'd find two numbers which add to give the number in front of the x, the coefficient of x, and that times to give 3. So what are those two numbers? Well 3 and 1 multiply to give 3 and they add to give 4. So we do x plus 3, x plus 4, that would be the factorization. And then we've got the product of two numbers equal to 0, so one of them has to be 0. So if x plus 3 was equal to 0, then x would be equal to minus 3. And if x plus 1 was equal to 0, then we've got x is equal to minus 1. But we can also solve this by completing the square with this first. Now I'm going to assume you've watched that video already or been taught it first, but I'm going to just do a quick recap of that. If we have x squared plus 4x plus 3, to complete the square means to get it in this particular form, where we've got x plus some number squared plus some number, and these could be negative, so it could be x minus 3 or something. And the way we do that is we halve the number in front of the x, so half of 4 is 2, so it's going to be x plus 2, you put that in a bracket, and then square it, and then if we were to imagine expanding it, that would give us x squared plus 4x and plus 4 as well, because we'd have the plus 2 times the plus 2 in the expansion. But we don't want that plus 4, so we subtract it. Do you remember we take that number, square it, and then subtract it? But we've still got that plus 3. So that gives us, when we simplify it, x plus 2 squared minus 4 plus 3 is equal to minus 1. But we said that this was equal to 0. So we've got x plus 2 squared minus 1 is equal to 0. And then we've got to think, how do we get x on its own? So x you're adding 2, then you're squaring it, and then you're subtracting 1 to get 0. So we undo those steps in reverse order. Well, we subtracted 1 last, so we add 1 to both sides. So we add 1 to both sides, we get x plus 2 squared equals add 1, we get 1. Now, x we added 2, and then we squared it. So we undo the squared next, we square root both sides, so that gives us x plus 2. We square root 1, and the square root of 1 is 1, but it could also be negative 1. Because if you think about it, minus 1 squared, minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. So it's actually plus or minus 1, and you have to put the plus or minus, otherwise we're going to lose a solution. And then we want to get rid of that plus 2, so we subtract 2 from both sides. So I'm going to just put it on the front, actually, rather than the end. We've got minus 2, plus or minus 1. Now, if we think about the plus or minus... If it was the plus case, so minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1, and minus 2 minus 1 gives us minus 3. And you can see that matches the solutions we've got here. Now, in this particular example, definitely factorization is much easier. But the advantage of this method is it works even when this expression doesn't factorize. So let's do some examples. We've got x squared plus 4x plus 1 is equal to 0. So we complete the square first. We're going to have x plus what's half of 4. We already knew it was 2 from the previous example, squared. Then we subtract that number squared, so minus 4. But we've still got that plus 1. And then that simplifies to x plus 2 squared. Minus 4 plus 3 is minus 3. And now it's a case of making x the subject. So x, we added 2, we squared it, and then we subtracted 3, so we want to get rid of that minus 3 first, we add 3 to both sides. Then we want to get rid of that squared, so we square root both sides. It's equal to plus or minus, what's the square root of 3? It's not a whole number, so we just need to put root 3. So it's plus or minus root 3, and then we subtract 2 from both sides, so it's minus 2 plus or minus root 3. Now you might wonder why I don't write plus or minus root 3 and then subtract 2 after. And the reason is, if I write that, plus or minus root 3 minus 2, can you see there's potential for some ambiguity here? Because it might look like that square root is over all of this. So rather than plus or minus root 3 minus 2, which is what we mean, people might think it means plus or minus root 3 minus 2. And obviously we don't want to have that confusion. So we tend to put the minus 2 at the front like this and have it before the plus or minus. Right, next example. We've got x squared minus 6x plus 7 equals 0. 
we first complete the square, so it's going to be x half of minus 6 is minus 3. And then we square that number and subtract it. Minus 3 squared is 9. Subtract it to so minus 9. Remember, it's always minus after the squared. And then we still got that plus 7 there. Let's simplify that. So our next step. So minus 9 plus 7 is minus 2. And then we add 2 to both sides to get rid of that minus 2. Then we square root both sides, so x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus root 2. And then we add 3 to both sides, and we put the 3 in the front, so it's 3 plus or minus root 2. And those would be the two solutions. We've got 3 plus root 2, and we've got 3 minus root 2. But we could leave it in this single form like this. Now let's go on to these hard examples. We've got the third one, which is 2x squared plus 12x plus 13 is equal to 0. Now this is harder because it's hard to complete the square on this because there's a number on front of the x squared. x squared has a coefficient which is not 1. So do you remember what we do is we'll, whatever number is on front of the x squared, we factorise that out of the first two terms. So we get 2 brackets and then 2 times x squared gives you 2x squared and 2 times 6x gives you 12x and then we still got that plus 13. And then do you remember that we complete the square inside this bracket. So everything outside the bracket stays the same, and I've written that in first, but now we complete the square inside this bracket. So we halve the number in front of the x, so it's x plus 3 squared, and then we square that number and subtract it. And this is all happening inside this bracket. Notice we've got a bracket within a bracket. That's expected. And then we expand out this outer bracket. So 2 times x plus 3 squared is 2x plus 3 squared. We got 2 times minus 9, which is minus 18. We still got the plus 13. And then if we simplify that a bit, minus 18 plus 13 is minus 5. So we do what we usually do. We add 5 to get rid of that minus 5. So 2x plus 3 squared equals 5. We next divide both sides by 2. Because with x, you're adding 3, then you're squaring it, and then you're times it by 2. So the last thing you did was times by 2, so we undo that next. So it's 5 over 2. Let's just leave it as a fraction. Then we square root both sides, so we get x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus root 5 over 2. And then we subtract 3. So we get x is minus 3 plus or minus root 5 over 2. And that is the final answer there. Finally, we got this one here. We got x minus 3 squared equals 2x. Now, you might initially think that we have a completed square here. The problem is, is that we've still got this x term here. When we've completed the square, there's only one instance of x, and it's inside the squared bracket. So we can't leave it like this. We have to expand it out first, and then we're going to have to recomplete the square. So if we expand this... We could write the bracket out twice, but do you remember that the quick way to expand out something squared is we do the first term squared, then we do 2 times the first term times the second term, so 2 times x times minus 3 is minus 6x, and then we have the second term squared, so minus 3 squared is plus 9, and then we've got equals 2x. Now, we want 0 on one side, so we need to subtract the 2x, so it's going to be minus 8x plus 9 equals 0. Then we complete the square, so it's going to be x minus 4 squared. We're going to have minus 16, but then we're adding 9, so it's going to be minus 7 equals 0. We add the 7, so x minus 4 squared is equal to 7. Then we square root both sides, so x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus root 7. And that means if we add 4 to both sides, x is 4 plus or minus root 7, and that is the final answer. Right, I'm going to give you these two test your understanding questions. So the first one is x squared plus 10x plus 22 equals 0. And then the second one is 3x squared is equal to 6x plus 8. And you want to solve that specifically by completing the square, not via some other method. Right, you may want to pause the video here. And let's do it. So, we complete the square. x plus half of 10 is 5, so it's 5 squared, minus 25 after. But then we've still got to add the 22. Let's tidy up a bit. x plus 5 squared, minus 25 plus 22 is minus 3. Add 3 to both sides. 
then we get rid of that squared by square rooting. So x plus 5, we don't need the brackets anymore, equals plus or minus root 3. And then finally, we subtract the 5. So x is minus 5 plus or minus root 3. And that's the final answer. Right, this one. Now, we need 0 on one side. So we subtract 6x and the 8 first. Then we complete the square. So we factorize the 3 out of the first two terms. So it's 3 times x squared and 3 times minus 2x. And then we complete the square inside that bracket. So we're going to have x minus half of minus 2 is minus 1. Then you square it and subtract it, so it's going to be minus 1. Expand out the outer bracket, so it's 3 times x minus 1 squared. 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. We've got the minus 8 as well. Now if we add 3 and 8, we're going to get this. We're going to get equals 11, and then we have to divide both sides by 3. So we get x minus 1 squared is equal to 11 over 3. And then if we square root both sides, we get x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 11 over 3. And then finally we add 1 to both sides. So x is 1 plus or minus the square root of 11 over 3. And that is the final answer. Well done if you got that right.